Welcome to example number two in our discussion of how to calculate impulse through a graphical calculation. As you can see, there's a graph shown here. Now, earlier we learned that the impulse was calculated by finding the change in momentum, which is mass times the change in velocity, or by multiplying the force by the time of impact. Now, when we did that, we were assuming that the force of impact was constant. Well, what would we do if the force was changing during the time of impact, which is really and often what occurs when you have real life situations. So how do we calculate the impulse in that scenario? Now, you may remember earlier when we dealt with um, velocity time graph. With the velocity time graph, the area under the curve in here represented the displacement. And we also learned that on the acceleration time graph that the area under the curve represented the change in velocity. So now we're doing another area under the curve. That's the area under a force versus time graph. And that area represents the impulse. And if the area is above the axis, that is a positive impulse in the direction that we have defined. And if the area falls below the axis, as you'll see in example two, then that impulse is a neg in the negative direction. So now let's look at example number two. We have a car weighing 13.6 kilonewtons. This is the weight of the car. And then it's traveling initially at a speed of 10 meters per second in the positive x direction. So let's just say that's to the right. And then it collides head on with another vehicle, a van weighing 33 kilonewtons. There's a horizontal force that is exerted on the car that was initially moving to the right. And this, this graph is shown here. Now there are some interesting graphical questions that I could ask you, for example, that wasn't asked in this initial question. For example, one could ask, uh, what is the maximum magnitude of the force that was exerted on the car? So look at the graph and tell me what you think would be the maximum amount of force that's exerted on the car. And if you look down here, that would occur at negative 60 kilo newtons. And then another question one could have asked as well, besides what the car's velocity is just after the collision, would be, what is the average force on the car during the collision? Now that's a little bit harder. Let's go ahead and try to answer that question before we proceed on to the question that's asked in here. In order to answer this question, we would first need to find out what the impulse is from the graph. And remember earlier we just discussed that the impulse is equal to the area under the curve. And the area under this force time graph is found by finding that triangular area, which is calculated by using 1 half times the base times the height shown. So that's 1 half times the base, which is 0.5 seconds. That's shown right here is 0.5 seconds. That's 0.7 minus 0.2, and then multiply by the height, which is negative 60 kilonewtons. So let's change that to newtons, which is 60,000 newtons. So the impulse works out to be negative 50, 15,000 newton seconds. Now we can find the average force by taking the impulse that we just got we'll call that the change in momentum, and dividing by the time of impact, because you recall, hopefully, that impulse is force times time. So that impulse is negative 15,000 newton seconds, and we're going to divide by the time of impact. And the time of impact is 0.5 seconds. And this gives us a force of negative 30,000 newtons. So right here is the average force, and right at negative 60,000 is the maximum force. 
So now let's proceed on to the question at hand here. What is the car's velocity just after the collision? We now need to link in this impulse with that initial speed and the mass of the car. So I'm going to move down here with a little bit more space here. So now we're going to use the definition of impulse as a change in momentum, which is really the final momentum minus the initial momentum, or mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity. Remember, the force that is exerted by the van is in the negative x direction, hence that's why we have a negative 15,000 newtons. Thus, the impulse is going to be negative here, negative 15,000 newton seconds. We're also going to substitute in the velocity. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second to the right. We need one more piece of information that is not quite explicitly stated, and that is the weight of the car. The car is given as 13.6 kilonewtons, but we really need to actually find the mass. The mass of the car is determined by using the force of gravity and dividing by g. So this is 13,600 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. This will give you a mass of 1,388 kilograms, roughly. So let's now substitute in here. We have negative 15,000 uh, newton seconds equals, and we'll take out the mass as a common factor here. Actually, no, we'll just leave it in here. And we'll write 1,388 kilograms times the final velocity, and then 1,388 kilograms times the initial velocity, which is 10 meters per second. And so what you'll have here is the, uh, when you add these two terms, or bring this term over to the other side, you'll end up with uh, negative 1122, so 1,122 uh, newton seconds, and then 1,388 kilograms times the final velocity. And so if we, both, if we divide both sides by that mass, we'll get a velocity of negative 0.809 meters per second. Means that the car is going to rebound backwards at a velocity of 0.809 meters per second in the left direction, or the negative x direction. You note that we didn't use the mass of the van because we weren't looking. This was the impulse, by the way, on the car which is the same as the impulse on the van. Um, and we could, if we knew what the initial velocity of the van was, we could find its final velocity as well. But uh, uh, we, weren't given with, we weren't given that information. And that's it for this example.